سلام به دوستان و شنوندگان عزیز من کلاله طبیب زاده هستم به برنامه تلنگور یا ویکاب کال خوش اومدید برای اون سری از دوستان که قبلا این برنامه رو دیدید و با ما بودین خیلی ممنون که با ما هستین و برای اون سری از دوستان که دفعه اول هست با ما هستید خوش اومدید انشالله که از این برنامه خوشتون بیاد و براتون مفید واقع بشه چون نیت و هدف اصلی من از اجرای این برنامه که واقعا هنوز افتخار میکنم آقای دروش اقبالین افتخار به من دادن و با تو بتونم اینجا صحبت بکنم اینه که بتونم داده ها و ابزارهای در اختیارتون قرار بدم که بتونید ازش استفاده بکنید و براتون مفید واقع بشه چون یه داده ای هر چقدر به نظر ارزشمند بیاد اگه نتونید ازش استفاده بکنید اگه نتونید منفعتی ازش ببرید تو زندگیتون هیچ فایده به نظر من هیچ فایده نداره و برای همین هست که من سعی می کنم هر هفته اینجا داده های رو در اختیارتون بذارم حقایق رو در اختیارتون بذارم که بتونه بهتون کمک بکنه چیزایی که خودم یاد گرفتم رو در اختیارتون بذارم و مهمونایی رو دعوت بکنم که با تعریف تجربه زندگیشون اتفاقاتی که برایشون افتاده یا کارهایی که دارن در تو جامعه میکنن بتونن یا به خودتون کمک بکنن یا شاید شما بتونید از اون طریق ب... اگه کسی رو میشناسید دور براتون هستن بهشون کمک بکنید من حدود 8 سال پیش اتفاقی افتاد که مثل این بود که از خواب بیدارم کرد و شروع کردم داوطلبانه در یک سازمان غیر انتفاعی به نام بنیاد دنیای آری از مواد مخدر یا فاوندیشن فور دراگ فری ورلد کار کردم این سازمان گسترده ترین برنامه غیر دولتی آموزشی و پیشگیری از مصرف مواد مخدر در جهان شعبه اصلیش در لس آنجلس هست ولی بیش از 100 تا شعبه در سراسر سر جهان داریم و تمام مطالب هم به 22 زبون مختلف از جمله فارسی ترجمه شده و به زبون فارسیش به زودی در اختیارتون میتونه قرار بگیره تمام مطالبشون رایگان هست و همه رو میتونید در سایتشون www.drugfreeworld.org همه رو نگاه کنید هسته اصلی برنامه یک دیویدی به نام حقیقت در مورد مواد مخدر که یک فیلم مستند افراد واقعی داستانهای واقعی که اینا اشخاصی هستن که در نوجوانی در تینیجری طرف مواد رفتن، متاد شدن ولی اونقدر خوششانس بودن که زنده موندن و دارن داستانشون رو تعریف میکنن. این دیویدی بسیار تأثیر گذار هست مخصوصا روی بچه ها هیچ چیز وحشتناکی توش نداره، وایلنت نیست، ترسناک نیست ولی حقیقت رو میگن و من اینقدر این برامه رو دوست دارم به خاطر اینکه مبناش بر اینه که حقیقت رو به بچه ها میگیم بهشون نمیگیم این کارو بکن اون کارو نکن لکچرشو نمی کنیم معایزهشو نمی کنیم چون هیچ کس دوست نداره کسی بهش بگه چیکار بکن چیکار نکن و اگه به بچه ها بگیم این کارو بکن نمی کنن اگه بگیم نکن می کنن و برای همین من از این روی کرد خیلی خوش آمد و دیدم نتیجه میده. من این دیویدی رو به خیلی نشون دادم که بچه های دیدن که در از این هر سال گذشته که گفتن که اگه میدونستن اینو اگه این دیویدی رو قبلا دیده بودن هیچ وقت اون سراغ مواد نمی رفتن و هیچ وقت اون کاری که کردن رو نمی کردن برای همین خیلی برنامه خوبیه خیلی مفیده و من یه باور اصلی اینه که چشمامون رو باز بکنیم ببینیم توی دوروبرمون چی میگذره من هی سال پیش چیزی که شد این بود که روی پسر خودم 15 سالش بود و یه مقاله تو اینترنت خوندم که یه پسر 15 ساله که هیچ وقت نه مواد مصرف کرده بود نه ماری جونا نه سیگار کشیده بود نه الکل به یه مهمونی میره تو مهمونی بچه ها از خونشون داروی تجویزی آورده بودن تو این کاسه ها میریزن و دور هم میگرد دور میگردونن و هر کسی یکی دو تا سه تا از این قرصا رو برمی داره میخوره و من خودم چون هیچ وقت دور برای مواد نبودم اصلا باورم نمیشد که همچین چیزی داره میفته توی جامعه توی بچهای تینیجر و این پسر که میگم هیچ کاری نکرده بود اشتباهی نکرده بود قبلا تو مواد نبود یکی دو تا از این قرصا رو میخوره 
اثری که رو بدنش میذاره باعث میشه قلبش وایسه و میمیره و من اون موقع بود که بیدار شدم و دیدم میگم اصلا نمیدونستم که همچین چیزی امکان داره ولی به پسرم که گفتم پسر 15 سالم که گفتم گفت آره مامان الان الان تو خیلی مهمونی این کارا میکنن البته خودش خوشبختانه اون مهمونی ها رو نمیرفت ولی آگاه بود از این موضوع و اون موقع بود که گفتم ما باید چشامون رو باز کنیم باید ببینیم چی میگذره بعد خودمون حقیقت رو پیدا کنیم در مورد هر چیزی مخصوصا مواد مخدر که انقدر همه جا دیگه الان دورورمون هست میخوای فقیر باشین ثروتمند باشین میخوای جای پولدار زندگی کنید جای فقیر زندگی کنید هیچ ربطی به نژاد نداره هیچ ربطی به سن و سال نداره ولی برای همین هست برای همین باید از این کار کردن بیرون بیایم ببینیم که چی داره میگذره بچه همون چی کار دارم میکنن و حقیقت رو پیدا کنیم و وقتی حقیقت رو پیدا میکنیم مسئولیتمون به اون نسبت بالا میره که حالا باید دیگران رو هم از اون موضوع آگاه بکنیم و واقعا باور دارم که اینجوری هست که ما میتونیم در جامعه همون تغییر به وجود بیاریم چون تغییرات رو خودمون به وجود خواهیم آورد نه شهردار سه... نه شهردارمون نه فرماندارمون نه اشخاص با رتبه بالا ما هم که میتونیم با هم دیگه داریم زندگی میکنیم و میتونیم جامعه امونو گروهی که باشون هستیم و تغییر توش ایجاد بیاریم حالا هر چقدر که میخواد تغییر کوچیک باشه یا هر چقدر کاری که ما میتونیم بکنیم کوچیک باشه ولی هنوز میتونیم یه کاری انجام بدیم و باید انجام بدیم برای بچه هامون و برای نسل آیندهمون حالا قبل از اینکه من مهمون امروز رو معرفی بکنم میخوایم فصل حقیقت در مورد ماری جوانا در این دیویدی رو با هم دیگه ببینیم Hash, swag, weed, sticky, marijuana. I ended up being addicted to heroin, coke, meth. I've done it all, and it all started with pot. Marijuana is the dry parts of the Indian hemp plant. Hash is the sticky crystalline that comes off when they pick it. A lot of it's like from Mexico, shipped over borders, and a lot of people manufacture their own and sell it. Hydroponics is like a system of growing weed. There's a lot of science. There's a lot of chemistry that go into wanting to make it stronger and comparing it to what was available in the 60s and 70s. There is a huge difference in potency. It's so much more stronger. It's so much more intense and so much more damaging to the body. The main mind-altering drug ingredient in marijuana is THC. THC is what gets you high. This drug is a hallucinogen, distorts your reality. It can be green, brown, or gray. It's compressed most of the time, like into brick forms that are, you know, real compressed, and they bag it into pounds and ounces, quarter ounces. So weed is either smoked or baked. You can smoke it from a bong, a pipe. You can roll it up as a joint. Some people they'll dissolve the. marijuana and butter and they'll make pop brownies, pop cookies, whatever food they want to ingest it with. I was wrestling, I was in football, went to school, got A's, you know, I was a good kid. I had this dream, I was going to make sure that I had an education. I was a B student and then I went from that to a C, D. I push aside my studies, I push aside any sports. To do the drug. I didn't want to go to school. I missed school all the time. I didn't graduate because of it. Everything kind of slipped away. I lost the glimpse of hope I had. I was probably 13, 14, something like that. I started smoking weed when I was 14, I think. 17. Can't forget that day. I saw pot everywhere when I first started doing it. I it it made it okay for me. I was with a friend. She's like, "It is. It's an herb. It's grown. It's safe. It's natural, and there's no problem with it." I knew other people did it. It seemed harmless at the time to me. Take a puff and pass to your buddy sitting next to you. No one ever, did, you know, passed it up. Everyone always took a hit. It started off as something very casual and fun, and then within a few weeks, it was something that became an everyday habit. And then it just turned into a sort of like escapism, just to get away from everything. I smoked weed so I didn't have to deal with life. It was uh, kind of um, taking place of life. There's a common misconception that weed is not like uh, addictive. I never thought I was addicted to marijuana. 
I thought it was just something that was part of my lifestyle. I thought it helped me relax. I've become so accustomed to like being stoned every night when I wasn't doing it, it was out of the norm. Once you smoke it, you really don't feel like you can do anything without it, you know? You just feel so high. You just wanna be high for everything you do. And there was nothing that I wanted to do with my day other than smoke weed. It was so weird, that was my driven purpose. I always had this idea in my mind that I can live life and smoke weed at the same time, but I never could. I'd wanna get high every day. You know, I'd want to get high when I woke up in the mornings. My mind was so set on having it that it, it preoccupied so much of my thinking that, that that became all that I did. That was all I thought about. If I ran out of weed, I'd be, I'd be pretty, pretty mad. Irritable and like annoyed with everything. I was tired. I was nervous, I was anxious. I couldn't sleep without it, you know, I'd be up for days when I tried to stop. It's an emotional roller coaster. It's very hard on you. I'd feel depressed by not having done anything better with my life, but I would still use the drug to hide from the problem. I was actually prom king. The drug dogs came to school, and I had some joint roaches in the ashtray of my truck and they found him. I got kicked out of school for it. I dropped out of school, you know, I had no job. I had no money to pay rent. It unconsciously separated me from my family, and I was always concerned with, like, when I was gonna go out and party, and it just, the priority list of, like, friends or family just slipped underneath. I stopped trying, and when that started, that was, I mean, that was, it just led to a different lifestyle. If I needed to get a job interview that included a drug test, I wouldn't take that job because I couldn't stop using it. I had a BMW and uh, I loved that car. I loved it. I was so hot and I just floored it, just went all out in it. And I took a curve and I lost it. I flipped the car over and my first reaction, I had a quarter pound of weed in there. And my first reaction was grab the bag, pull up my weed. One of my friends uh, was smoking pot, him and a buddy. He was going like 80, went off the road and hit a tree, killed my other buddy. I wound up in prison. I served uh, three years, 11 months, and 19 days. I've been locked up since I started smoking about 12 or 14 times. Went to jail, been facing charges ever since. Got a felony on my record. It ruins your chances to get a good job. It ruins your chances to get anywhere. You know, once you have a record, that's it. So it's, it's not fun at all. People say marijuana is a gateway drug. I mean, you can argue that all you want, if it is or it isn't. The fact of the matter is, when you smoke pot, the people that you hang out with are going to have other drugs around you. Eventually, you're gonna run into it. As much as I hate the word gateway drug, I'm the prime example of it, and I know lots of other people who followed the same path. I basically realized that my gateway to those drugs was the fact that I couldn't stop smoking weed on a daily basis because eventually you build a tolerance and then you stop getting high. So you still crave a high. So you go out and look for other drugs. Which of course were even harder drugs. So um, that's how I tried coke. And uh, I'll go over to another friend's house and people would show up with mushrooms. Hey, you want to buy mushrooms? After that, I started doing a cocaine and Oxycontin. Do some heroin. Introduce to coke, Xanax, ecstasy, all that stuff. I wouldn't have touched any of that stuff because I wouldn't even know what being high was. So once you get high, it just changes everything. Maybe nothing horrible is gonna happen to you those first 10 times you do it. But before you know it, it's gonna be a huge component of your life. And personally, I wish I would've just avoided it. I know people who've grown up and never smoked weed and are perfectly fine. They're socially accepted. They have great lives. It's all a big hype, you know what I mean? It's, they just tell you that, oh yeah, you know, you just get high, whatever, everything will go away. That's, that's BS. The problems that you had before you got high are still gonna be there when you're done being high. You're gonna ruin relationships. You're gonna get yourself in trouble with the law. You're gonna screw your finances up. You're gonna screw your future up. It took away you know, my chances of wrestling in college or playing football in college, going to college for academics because I was capable, and that is all gone. So now I can't vote, can't do anything normal citizen. I would have been in college right now, about to graduate, probably going for something decent, a good degree, get a job, get my life together. 
not going through what I'm going through right now. It wasn't something that was harmless. Smoking pot ended up taking my life away and leading me onto another life that I never wanted. If you give me the address, سلام دوباره کلاله طبیب زاده هستم برنامه تلنگر یا ویک اپ کال این فصل حقیقت در مورد ماری جوانا بود که در این دی وی دی دی تروت بعد دراگز حقیقت در مورد مواد مخدر با هم دیدیم یه چیز دیگه بگم این تمام این مطالب در سایت www.drugfreeworld همه اینها رو میتونید اونجا برین تمام دی وی دی رو اونجا نگاه کنید و کتابچه هامون هم اونجا هست 14 تا کتابچه هست در مورد مواد مخدر مختلف حقیقت در مورد ماری جوانا حقیقت در مورد الکل شیشه و غیره و همه اینها اونجا در به زبان انگلیسی فعلا هست و همونطور که گفتم ان شاء با زبان فارسی هم به زودی اونجا خواهد بود و حالا میخوام مهمون امروزمون رو معرفی بکنم کریس میناسیان های کریس ام گود هاو ار یو ام فاین تانک یو فور اسکینگ گود تانک یو سو مچ فور بینگ هیر Uh, I really appreciate it. So why don't you go ahead and <clears throat> tell us about you, your, you know, what you're about or who you are, and then I'll try to translate also uh, little by little, as, as well as I can. Fair enough. Uh, I want to begin uh, one thanking you for having me on. Um, it's always a pleasure. And um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Chris Manassian. I am married. I have uh, three children. Um, and uh, actually one on the way. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and um, uh, currently I'm employed with uh, a mortgage broker. I'm an assistant, uh, also the office manager. And um, it's been great. I'm really grateful of where I am in my life t- today. Uh, although uh, it wasn't always that way and we'll get more into talking about that. Exactly. Um, so let me translate that real quickly. Sure. Uh, so Chris, uh, مسئول هماهنگی تامین وام مسکنی هستش. متأهل است و بچه داره و زنش الان حامل است و بچه چهارمشون و um, الان گفت هم الان خیلی um, خوشحالم از طوری که زندگیم هست ولی همیشه اینجوری نبوده. Um, uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. So um, being said that, I guess uh, you want to get into my endeavor in this whole marijuana uh, situation that's going on currently. Yeah, I, I want to say that um, you've been clean for four years, right? Yes. Which is amazing. So, Charles Ale Pake. I met you three years ago. I met him three months. Chris was three years ago. I met him 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 three years ago. I میخواست با سازمانی که داره این مطالب رو منتشر میکنه باشون تماس بگیره و کمک بکنه و اونجوری بود که با هم دیگه ملاقات کردیم و از اون موقع با من خیلی جاها میاد خیلی مدارس میاد و با خیلی بچه ها صحبت کرده راجع به ماری جانا و تأثیری که ماری جانا میذاره So I basically said how we met three years ago after you saw the booklet about marijuana booklet and you decided you wanted to do something about this So tell me why and you know what happened Well, it goes back, starting years back, with my own personal struggle uh, with marijuana. Um, and um, basically, instead of using natural tools, which I should have back then, to combat you know, everyday stress and pressure that we all have, you know, life brings us, uh, rather I used uh, marijuana to cope with them. Um, and that kind of went on. for several years and I found myself being very um, complacent in my life, very just not in tuned with reality and what's happening to me. Uh, therefore, um, my relationship uh, went into destruction. Um, it was very self-deteriorating time for me and um, I have to credit marijuana to be the reason for that and that's kind of why I'm on today is to um, give my experience and shed some light and hopefully people out there that are struggling um, can pick something up from that. Right, you were married and you had kids at the time too, right? That's right. Okay, so I'm going to translate that real briefly. So 
گفتش که چند سال پیش وقتی شروع به استفاده مصرف از ماریجانا کرد به جایی که از مواد طبیعی استفاده بکنه که بتونه مبارزه بکنه یا رو به رو بشه با مشکلاتی که اون موقع داشت که هممون داریم گفت فشارهای زندگی مشکلا رو همه دارن ولی به جایی که از روش طبیعی کمک بگیره که به اون مسائل کمکش بکنه به طرف ماریجانا رفت که زندگیش از اون موقع شروع کرد به پایین و پایین بدتر شدن و اون موقع ازدواج کرده بود و بچه‌ام داشت کریس هو واز فرست لایک هاو دید یو فرست گت ایت اند هاو اولد ور یور کیدز ات دی تایم Well, my first experience, um, unfortunately, like many uh, teenagers um, in this era, I experienced it uh, in high school, coming out of high school, which was more of an, I would say, an exper- experimental thing. Uh, but I left it alone, uh, surprisingly, for a few years until <clears throat> probably closer to my uh, mid 20s is when it really played a big role okay. in my life um, as I got into having my first uh, uh, child and and um, encountering relationship issues and just in general stress that comes along with life I depended as that, that's a big word for me when I talk to people now about the drug I became dependent right. on the drug um, marijuana became kind of a tool for me to cope and deal with a lot of things that otherwise I was having struggling with to deal with right so gofish ke tu dabiristan bahash tajrube karde bud vali vaqti wasat hay 20 salegish bud va awasat 20 sal 25 6 salegi bud ke un moqa bachcha daram shode bud va hamon ke gof ba ke ba mushkilatash betune ru daru beshe kenar biyad mushkil ejtemaai ya زن و شوهری دوباره شروع کرد به مصرف کردن که کمکش بکنه برای رو در شدن با اون مشکلات و همون گفت سلف دیسترکتینگ بود یعنی همونجور خودش رو بتر و بتر میکرد و چیزی که میگه میگه که و بهش دیپندنت شدم یعنی بهش دیگه نمیتونستم استفاده نکنم بهش بهش از باید ادکشن نیست when you become dependent on something Great, and so that was, and you had a kid, and is that uh, what caused you to ruin that relationship with your wife? Was Do you think it was part, it, or, or it, it contributed? It definitely contributed. It didn't help. Uh, it contributed to a lot of negative uh, aspects of, at the time, with, you know, it amplified my character defects. So it didn't, it didn't, it didn't help me deal with the underlying problems. It helped me uh, not focus on those underlying problems. It, it right. made it where it was acceptable. Right, right. Yeah, definitely smoking or pot or drugs definitely don't help any kind of a relationship. So, go fish get sad or sad. یه دلیلی که زندگی اون ازدواج اصلیش به هم خورد همین پات بود چون که سعی میکرد چیزها رو کاور آب بکنه و وقتی آدم رو مواد هست با اون مشکل اصلی که داره رو در رو نمیشه و برای هم همیشه سعی میکنه چیزی رو کاور بکنه و و اینجوری که از هم دیگه جدا میشه یا رابطه ها از هم دیگه میپاشن حالا با هم بریم چند تا پیام ببینیم و برمیگردیم با کریس میناسیان بیشتر صحبت خواهیم کرد
Maybe get my juice, took up this mole, get all what's on the BTA. I started to feel a fire that I thought I had swollen glands. Life was going to change for me pretty quick. Went to the doctor, he put me on an antibiotic. A week later, I started feeling like a lump at the side of my back. They immediately took an x ray and said, That's a tumor. They did the biopsy, found out it was cancer, started me on chemo and radiation right away. Since I was so young, they wanted to try to save my voice. And I was okay for about a year. Then I was brushing my teeth and I spit up some blood. So, back to the doctor, and he's like, uh, next step is we gotta remove the voice box. They said synthetic drugs would give me a safe high. They said synthetic drugs would give me a safe high. They lied. Find out the truth about synthetic drugs. Drugfreeworld.org سلام دوباره کلاله طبیب زاده هستم برنامه تلنگر یا ویک اپ کال با مهمون عزیزمون کریس میناسیان داریم صحبت میکنیم که گفت در دبیرستان که بود ماری جانا رو برای اولین بار امتحان کرد و وقتی که 20 سالش بود یا 25 6 سالش بود با ازدواج کرده بود و بچه دار شده بود و برای اینکه با مشکلات زندگیش نمیخواست رو در رو بشه فشارهای زندگی که همه داریم به جای که چیزای طبیعی استفاده بکنه دوباره ماری جانا امتحان کرد و Chandin Salbesh Etiyadasht, Motadeh Shodebud. So Chris, tell us uh, what happened, uh, how many years did you continue smoking pot and how that affected your life, your married life and your kids? Okay, well, um, I would say I would, I, would, I would consider myself a functional smoker. So uh, essentially, uh, marijuana became part of my life, I, I was able to function just fine in terms of going to work, on and on. At least that's how it seemed externally. Internally, mm -hmm. I was struggling em emotionally and a lot of the effects that marijuana does in terms of chemical imbalancement in your mind and, and just I can go on and on uh, with the destruction it, it, it uh, creates within somebody not including health and respiratory issues that, that it, it brings. Um, so uh, es essentially the struggle went on and um, because my relationship was affected by it, uh, it trickled all the way down to my kids. So when anytime you have a life partner and you have uh, kids to be responsible for and to raise, they're going to be affected if you and your life partner aren't uh, uh, eye to eye with things and aren't on the same page. So, absolutely, I, I really feel for uh, couples out there in any sense, married, <clears throat> girlfriend, however you want to 
uh, whatever the relationship is, that they have drugs in between them that they uh, struggle with because right. it really puts you in a place where you have a really difficult time communicating, just having the basics of what a relationship needs for it to be healthy and um, um, functional. Right. So I'm going to translate that real quickly. Um, so I said that when he used it, he used it in 100% in his relationship with his wife and his children. He said that he was something like a functioning smoker. I mean, that I used it as a smoker. From outside, it seemed to me that everything was okay. He went to work, he did everything he did. But from inside, he had a lot of struggle. He had a lot of struggle with his own issues. ماریجوانا با خودش آورد به همراه داشت مشکلات ریوی نفس کشیدن اون کمیکال این بالانسی که توی مغز و برین آدم به وجود میاره گفت تمام اونا بالا پایین رفتن های ایموشنالی با همه اونا می جنگیدم و وقتی که مواد بین یه زن و شوهر میاد یا دوست و خر دوست پسر میاد وقتی توی یه خانواده میاد از خیلی مشکل به وجود میاره چون به جای که بشین راجب مشکلاتتون آدم صحبت بکنه نشعه میشین، سموک میکنی، مواد مقدر استفاده میکنی که اصلا مشکلاتون رو یادتون بره یا از واقعیت دور بشین And how did that affect your, did that have any effect on your kids when you were smoking or Uh, for the most part, I was able to keep it uh, discreet uh, away. Um, fortunately, um, I was good at being a parent, yeah. uh, um, not so much as a partner, but as a parent, I, I was. I'm fortunate to that, and, and uh, the results um, are evident with my children t today and how well they're doing. And, Uh, with school and on and on so um essentially the effect was pretty much you know here and there they would see you know maybe arguments between me and their mother and in that sense it definitely did but i never had it around them i never uh smoked it around them um i didn't uh it was it was out completely of anything that related to them That's great. Yeah. That's so great. I, was, I was able to do that. Good. That's well done. Yeah. So what happened um, that you decided to quit? That's a good question. Um, you know, what marijuana does is it impairs your ability to make decisions. And I would say over the course of the years that it had influence on me, I made... Um, S several bad decisions. I mean, we all make bad decisions, but there were just a few that really stood out. And uh, quite frankly, I was at a point in my life where um, I was just tired of making bad decisions, whether it be financially, um, personally. Um, I, I had uh, legal issues as well behind it. Um, and uh, even till today struggling with those things behind marijuana, mistakes I made in the past uh, that I'm still dealing with and trying to self-correct uh, those actions from the past. Again, whether it be legally, a uh, problem with the law, with relationships with people that fell out and or uh, monetary, right. you know, bad business decisions or things like that. and. Um, I take accountability for it, absolutely, but without a doubt, I feel like uh, marijuana or any other drugs that uh, enable you from being in reality uh, are uh, credited right. to these kind of mistakes. Right, absolutely. But, but I do take accountability for it all, and we'll get more into what I've done to self-correct right. those behaviors and how I've changed my life. and become productive and essentially picked up positive habits. Right. Well, yeah. That's great. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, that's why I tell people that, you know, you can't really blame anybody else because that's why, I mean, at the end of the day, you are who's taking up that joint. You're the one who's sipping that alcohol. I agree. And, uh, you, you know, yeah, you can say no, but uh, it, just to say no is not enough. That's why I love this program, The Truth About Drugs, is that you, you uh, arm your kids. You arm the people with the truth, and then they will make better decisions, hopefully, 
because now they know the truth and they know the consequences of their actions and they won't make bad decisions. Like you said, we all make bad decisions, but why, you know, why bring in something that's going to help us make bad decisions? That's right. You know? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's uh, essentially that's when I speak to, and we'll get more into this, when I speak to teenagers and, and students at high schools in different places, essentially that's the message is, hey, you know, we all have free will to make choices, you know, whether to use drugs or, or not. At least allow yourself some background, some context, some education behind the product that you're buying, uh, the product that you're using, whatever. I mean, we know this is basics before we go buy some, before we buy a phone, we do all our research, right. you know, before paying an X amount for it. So essentially it's, it's all pretty much the same. It's the con same concept with drugs. I mean, most of these people, they don't really know the drug inform enough information about the drug they're using. They know how it makes them feel. Right. So that's the attraction to it. But no one really is out there talking about the truth right. behind that drug. Right. So again, the truth about drugs, you know, is, is, is a wonderful program. We'll get more into some of the lives I've been able to change and, and influence positively using the program. And right. I can't wait to share that. Yeah, well go ahead and share it with us. Okay, well, uh, as you mentioned beginning um, when we met, it was simply picking up a booklet and um, <clears throat> that's progressed to us going to schools, which I, I've said this before, uh, Coco's uh, one of my mentors and uh, that's not a surprise. She's helped me in my journey in spreading the truth about drugs. Um, we've spoken at several schools, right. community, youth community centers, and um, truthfully, I've actually found a passion for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that drive and the passion to help others change their lives uh, like I did, um, I've had the opportunity to go around the states and meet like-minded people uh, that want to make a difference, however, they don't have much, um, they, they don't have the tools, the materials, they have the passion, they have the drive. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've taken the program uh, to different states and um, I've tried to implement what I'm doing here, which is using the programs at public schools, private schools, uh, youth community centers, any youth organization I can get my hands on though that are interested to educate uh, you know, uh, their kids, um, I'm willing to show up and speak. So uh, we've had great success here mm -hmm. with it. We've seen tremendous <laughs> results. And I've taken that same drive to um, uh, Kansas City is one of the states that we're currently thriving with this program. Uh, we've implemented it in uh, several youth community centers. Um, also, it's being used um, at a health behavioral facility, which, um, believe it or not, um, there are court-ordered defendants who have, have had legal issues behind drugs, that have been in incarcerated and now are uh, required to take these behavioral courses and classes. And um, the Truth About Drugs program is um, implemented. And um, I actually have several post-program surveys from these defendants that have taken the program and have written about how it's changed their lives and how they're now more informed and understand what led them to using, right. how using affected their life, and now, most importantly, the tools they have to disconnect themselves right. wow. with the drug. Yeah, it's amazing. And I, I have these uh, surveys, I, 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 you know, um, fortunately, uh, we have an opportunity to speak about this openly and um, 
finding people that are like-minded uh, and bringing them together and using the program to spread the word. Another state I've been successful doing the same is uh, Spokane, Washington. Wow. Um, and we started a chapter there. So currently, um, I am uh, co-directors with two chapters in two other states, along with everything that I'm doing out here. And I'm trying to do more and more. Uh, we only have 24 hours in a day, so between making a living and putting food on the table for my family, I any time I get my hands on any schools anywhere, I'll make the time. I know, as and you I know. Have, yeah, exactly. And I wanted to say that no matter what I just, no matter how much of a short notice or anything, I've always asked you, and I, I really appreciate that you've always. You know, I'm going to be there. I know, and it makes such a difference, which is when you talk to kids because you know, you're, you've been there. Like, I, I haven't done drugs, so I, I mean, I can tell them not to do it, but they're like, well, what do you know? But you've been there, and that's why I say, when you find out the truth, it's, you need to find out from somebody who's been through it, not from somebody who's trying to sell it to you. That's right. But those guys are gonna tell you whatever they can, so you buy from them. But when they hear from somebody like you, and you're, you share your experience, which is also great, because a lot of people actually don't want to remember that that time you know, right they it's difficult yes it, right. it is and and you know the, the one thing that I can say is the core of why I changed my life with it and it's very important and it took me years to come to this reality and this decision and commitment is you have to have the willingness you have to you have to decide at the end of the day. The drug isn't going anywhere, as we know. They're all over the, the place. So right. you can't avoid it. It's not like you can say, well, I'm going to stay away from it, and that will be it. No, because then you may cross paths with it again. And if you're weak-willed and you don't have the will to not engage, then unfortunately, as we see so many victims to this, is it starts out very innocent, just exploring or trying, especially with our youth, and it leads to dependency, addiction, and into more uh, harder drugs, right. quote unquote, right? Right. So. Yeah, and I, and I feel like that willingness, that strength to, to not go towards it comes with having the truth, because I feel like if you know, if you know what, the, what the harms are, if you know what kind of a life you could possibly have if you try that one, you know, the first time, if you know the chances of addiction, if you, if you try that first time, if you know what you're being told so that you take that first joint, like if you know all that stuff, so if somebody comes up to you and says, oh, the, the, you know, it's only pot, it's legal, you know, it's, to, it's natural, it's an herb, you know, you're not going to get addicted. When you know the truth, you're going to say, no, it's not. And you know, then you can just walk away. You, you, that gives you the power to walk away. You know, th those same people that say that um, haven't hit rock bottom. Right. You know, and one thing I'm noticing with, especially some of the people that we've helped um, from the uh, post-program surveys, one thing they all have in common is, unfortunately, they had to hit rock bottom. Now, human nature tells us, well, you know, I. I don't need to get there to, and some don't. Some don't have to hit their heads against the wall. Some don't have to walk through the fire to learn, you know. Uh, and that's great. We have all walks of life in our society. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to help everybody. What I'm trying to help is the people that are struggling right. with this kind of behavior, where to them, it's somehow they made it acceptable for them to put their lives through. Uh, and I understand, I've gone through it myself, but that's why I'm out there speaking. I'm a voice for the, the person or, or the teenager that um, really doesn't have a grasp on what they're about, the journey they're about to take with the drug. Right. You know, I'm, I'm trying to step in front of it, and as many as I can help, that's, you know, that's his... That's as many wins as I can get from that. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, we are at the end of our program, and I'm going to have Chris come back again. خیلی ممنون که با ما بودید. کریس حتما برمیگرده. امیدوارم که یه چیزی یاد گرفته باشید. متاسفم که نتونستم بیشتر ترجمه بکنم حرفای کریس رو. هفته خوبی داشته باشین تا برنامه دیگه خدا نگهدار. Thank you. Thank you.
تلنگر با کلاله طبیبزاده